Generosity moves the heart of God. He delights in our kindness. We give because He gave everything for us. He withholds no good thing. All that we have is from Him and for Him. Freely we have received, and freely we give. We give to be a blessing to others. We are the hands and feet of Jesus, extending our hearts to those around us. Being moved by true compassion, letting the world know that we care, that we can love like Jesus, that our faith is not merely words, but action. Our blessings aren't meant just for us. They are meant to be shared and multiplied. When we sacrifice and freely give, it is not just for those who receive, but it is unto the Lord Himself. This Thanksgiving season, let's reflect on our many blessings. Let us be generous with the gifts God has given us. And with thankful hearts, let us celebrate the goodness of God with those around us. Good morning, church. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we uh, have an exciting morning for you. Last week, we finished up our message series on mental health matters. If you didn't get a chance to check that out, we'd encourage you to do so via our YouTube uh, page or web page. Uh, powerful messages that have been, um, God's been using those quite a bit uh, to help some folks. Next week, we're going to launch our Advent series, The Gifts of Christmas. Uh, so we're excited about that. But for today, the Sunday before Thanksgiving, we have a special treat for you. Uh, we have a new, some new friends in ministry that it is our desire to partner with at the Heart of a Warrior Farm. And so uh, for this morning, we've asked uh, Jim Hartley to come and give the message. Jim is president and co-owner of Heart of a Warrior Farm, along with his wife, Lisa. Uh, the farm is located in Granville, Ohio. Uh, it's a nonprofit therapy farm. They have been married for 13 years and have a blended family of 10 children, 11 grandchildren, uh, five of them with special needs, and one more on the way. Your quiver is full. <laughs> Amen. Uh, they purchased the farm in October 2018, and that's where the Heart of a Warrior Farm began. Jim has coached basketball for the West Licking Special Olympics organization since 2005, and people with different abilities have always been a part of his life. So we are super excited to find out a little bit more about the story of the farm and the ministry of the farm, and to um, just kind of ask God how we can partner more and more uh, with the Heart of a Warrior Farm. So uh, Jim, I want to invite you to come up and share the message with us this morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Nervous? Yeah, a little bit. Not really. Um, I had the opportunity this past week. We uh, done some filming of some videos at the farm, and uh, we kept doing a couple of retakes. And I said, well, this is just getting me ready for uh, next Sunday to be able to speak in front of a bunch of other people that I may or may not know. Um, thank you for having us, Tina. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, as she stated, heart of a warrior farm, <clears throat> we are a therapeutic riding center, um, riding horses, um, to be a little more specific. Um, I've been with Special Olympics, it seems like my entire life. I still remember the day sitting on a Lisa's front porch when we were dating, and I asked about the endeavor and about getting married, and it was kind of a hard conversation, and it, Actually, when we was dating, I think it was, and I said, now, you realize that at that time, we only had 50-some athletes in Special Olympics, and I said, not just my six kids, but I have like 50-some other kids of mine as well, and she said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, there are Special Olympic athletes. They are my kids, and they'll always be part of me, and uh, she agreed to that. Little did we know that Special Olympics was going to keep growing and keep growing to... Um, West Licking Special Olympics now has over 150 athletes participating in different sports, about 12 different sports. And uh, I'm proud to be one of the founding uh, people in West Licking as far as a coach for that. Um, our son, uh, Bryce, has special needs. He is attention deficit, borderline bipolar, and extremely ADHD. Um, he is what got me into Special Olympics, and he is what was a motivating part of the farm. 
Um, he was chosen in 2017 to play in the 2018 um, Special Olympics um, USA Games, and it was going to be out in Seattle, Washington. And I remember that the um, coordinator at the time come to me and asked me about it and said, would you, would you like to have Bryce attend this? And I was like, um, I think. You know, I was kind of new at that. Um, it became a financial challenge to see if we could get there. There was a lot of money we had to come up with. And Lisa and I talked about it, and we said, how can we not do this for our son? This could be a life-changing thing for him. Little did we know that it was going to be life-changing for us. Um, every day we was out there, my wife was a very devout lady that reads daily the Word, um, Scripture. Um, she kept reading and reading that week, and everything kept talking about faith. And that's kind of where my message comes from today is faith. I have with me probably one of the smallest seeds I think I've ever seen, and I know you can't see it, and you all are probably familiar with what I'm holding up. It's a mustard seed. And uh, God says that if we have faith the, the size of a mustard seed, that we can move mountains. And um, while we was out there in Seattle, um, Lisa looked at me, not being a farm girl at all, and said, hey, that farm down the road. And I just kind of peeked up and looked at her, and I said, yes. And she said, could you put a basketball arena in there? Because I was a basketball coach for Special Olympics. And I just quickly said, nope. <laughs> and she says, you said that awfully fast. Why did you say that so fast? And I said, well, I didn't tell you. But two weeks ago, I stopped and I looked at that farm. She goes, you did? I said, yes, I did. She goes, what are you thinking? I said, I don't know, but here's the lay of the, what I saw. I said, I don't know what I'm thinking, but I just feel like God called us there to do something. And uh, all of her devotions that we talked about stepping out in faith, and let me show you the way. And... It was truly a remarkable time out there, not just that we got to see our son do something incredible. Um, a bonus for us out there, he became the USA champion in singles tennis for his age. And to see the victory on his face, that he just overcome all of his obstacles in life. And while we're out there <clears throat> talking about and praying about this farm, and we discussing it with some other people that we knew out there, it just became real clear to us that this was a venture that we should take. We got stuck in Chicago Airport on the way back. Great airport to be stuck in. Just kidding, by the way. <clears throat> I don't know that any airport is a good one to be stuck in, but Chicago O'Hare is not one you want to be stuck in. And I'll, I'll never forget Lisa looking at me and saying, are we going to do this venture? And I just looked at her and got frustrated by being stuck in an airport. I said, what, what are you talking about? And she goes, the farm. I just remember saying, well, I don't know what to do. And I asked her, I said, well, what do you think? And she said, I think we have to. My wife's a city girl. She's not a farm girl. Wasn't a farm girl. She's becoming a farm girl. Little boy, little. Um, so for my wife to say that we have to do this, I knew that it was something we had to pursue. Um, I remember, and I left my phone down there because I didn't want to have to look at it. I grabbed my phone out of my back pocket, and I started typing. And she goes, what are you doing? I said, well, if we're doing this, we've got to have a meeting with a banker. That's a lot of money to go through. And uh, we are a paycheck-to-paycheck -paycheck family, and an endeavor like this was out of our reach. Um, so I emailed a banker on a Saturday night, and he emailed me back on a Sunday afternoon. And as I've told this story over and over, I said, what banker emails you back on a Sunday afternoon? And the resounding response I got was a good one. A good banker will do that. I went in and met with him on Monday afternoon. Lisa was at work. 
And I remember laying everything out to him. Now, who would guess that the banker that I met with was a former Special Olympics coach? Already paving the way of what was to come. As many of you know, when you go to any kind of a banker for a loan or anything, you're always expecting the worst. The hair stands up on the back of your neck. You're sweating profusely like you just came out of a sauna. And I was all of that. And I remember sitting there, and it just I, I felt like I was in an interrogation room for two hours. And I was probably honestly there for 15 minutes. And I remember him looking at me, slapped his hands, went like this, and he goes, all right, you want an approval letter? And my eyes wide open, and I literally put my hands up and went, no. And he went, well, wait a minute, what do you mean no? He goes, I, I said, I wasn't expecting this at all. I said, I have to go home and talk to my wife. I, I really wasn't expecting this. And I went home and I talked to her and told her about it, and she says, well, what do we do now? I said, well, I guess we've got to find a realtor, don't we? So the story starts there uh, for Heart of a Warrior Farm. But it all goes back to the mustard seed faith because we, we felt we was called there. God was playing all the parts for it, paving the way for everything. And then, especially as a guy, we do what we do best, and that is get in the way of what God plans. And as we, we decided we was going to move on this house, when we went and we looked at it, and uh, my wife hated the house absolutely didn't like anything about this house. She said, I don't like the kitchen. I don't like the colors of the walls. And I just said, look, we'll take equity out of selling our house and we'll remodel it the way you want it done. She said, okay. She was okay with that. I already had a cabinet guy give me a layout for the kitchen. We were going to do this the way that she wanted the house, the way that we wanted the house. <clears throat> I'll never forget that we put our house up on the market and the realtor said, be ready. You're going to have offers this weekend and you've got to be ready to move. We didn't have one showing. A week went by, no showings. Two weeks goes by, no showings. I'm frustrated and I'm like, oh, our price is too high. Lower the price by $1,000. I did this for a month, kept dropping the price, sometimes a couple of thousand dollars, to a point that Lisa looks at me and says, we can't drop this price anymore. We're not going to be able to remodel the house. I said, hey, something's just not right. I just don't know what it is. And I remember driving home from work one day, and I heard this audible voice say to me, I called you to a mission, not your dream home. And it resounded to me. And I came home and I said, babe, we've got to talk. She says, I know. I said, you know what? She goes, we're not going to remodel the house, are we? I said, no, we're not. God called us there for a mission, not our dream home. Our house was in contract within one week, and it sold. I, and I give you the backstory to that to say that we, especially as men, always want things the way we want things. If we as all to be honest, most men, we get a, just maybe just a wee little bit of control in us where we like to control things our way. And what I realized through this whole thing, this whole process of getting the farm was we was called to do something. We stepped in the way of what God wanted to do until we had to acknowledge the fact that he called us to do something and that we had to back out of the way and let him do what he called us to do. Um, I've got a few slides that uh, we prepared for you for that kind of shows through the farm. Um, if Christian's ready up there. Um, as they stated and I've stated, we are heart of a warrior farm. That's kind of a picture of when we bought the farm, all nice, lush, and green with no horses living on it for two years, to what it is today with uh, 14 horses, a mini donkey, lots of renovations and changes, and lots of mud, not quite as green. But uh, 
We are close, we are local, and uh, we love what we do. So if we can go to the next. Um, this is the scripture verse for today that uh, I've, I've stated already. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you'll be able to say to the mountain, to remove hence and go yonder, and it shall be removed. And what I find really enlightening about that scripture is this, this mustard seed is so small. And sometimes we think we have a lot of faith. But it doesn't take a ton of faith. It only takes just a little bit of faith to truly be able to do what God calls us to do. So our next slide then is uh, I got some, uh, some things that kind of talks about what we do. We, do, we call it adaptive writing. Um, in a horse world and with therapists, um, it's a fine line to talk about that you do therapeutic writing if you do not have a therapeutic counselor on staff. Um, so we have renamed it uh, as adaptive writing. Um, I myself am really bad at still calling it therapeutic writing because it's therapy to me and uh, even without a counselor out there. Um, adaptive writing, it's an important piece of our equine therapy. Um, not all of our riders out there will ride a horse. Some of them walk a horse, some of them groom a horse, um, some of them hug a horse, some of them lay on a horse, and we have some photos that will show you some of that. Next slide. So here's a couple of our riders. Um, over the years, we'll just kind of go through these, but you can see the smiles on the faces, um, and you can tell by looking at the uh, volunteers that's even there uh, in these photos that these volunteers are being ministered to just as much as the people that's in the photos. The one there on, we'll go back to the one, uh, the gentleman standing there, that's my buddy Larry. Larry comes out to the farm every Monday uh, night at 5 o'clock. Um, his parents found our farm during COVID because all of his services shut down and we continued to provide a place uh, where these kids and adults could come. Larry is very nonverbal, um, very unstable on his feet. But I'm telling you what, when that boy gives me a hug, actually I should say young man gives me a hug, it's heartfelt. It might not be super strong, but he is just so excited. And the two things that he always asks me is lawnmower and Merry Christmas. It's the two things he always says to me. Our next slide. There's some of the love of uh, these kids and what horses do for them. Um, the one on the left, she was having a very, very bad day that day. And I remember it as one of my most special moments out there at the farm that we couldn't get her to settle down. We couldn't get her to control herself. Um, her actions were really wild. And I remember picking her up off the horse and I said to the volunteers, take the saddle off the horse. And at the time, I was doing a lot of the instructing, and I remember my volunteers looking at me like, are you crazy? That's not what we're here about. Had them take the saddle off, and I laid her down on that horse, and her whole misdemeanor changed just by body-to-body -body contact with that horse. Um, so that was an amazing day. Our next slide. And there's what I talk about, hugging the horses, kissing the horses. Um, the one hugging the horse, um, that was our first therapy horse, Rose. Um, she was a lover. She'd let anybody love on her. And Nate has been with us for over three years, and he still has not gotten on a horse yet. Um, but Nate loves the horses. Um, his instructor, Miss Lee, is actually here. She loves Nate. Um, Nate is, <laughs> look at her looking around for him. Uh, Nate is an amazing young man. Next photo. This is Kai. Kai is wheelchair bound, nonverbal. Um, his mother owns a, uh, a place in Pataskala called the Planasium where they do um, writing, uh, or not writing, they do uh, a playhouse basically where kids with different abilities can come and play. Uh, Kai's mom found out about us and brought him out. Um, the 
photo uh, with me kneeling there in the front. Um, that is Kai getting to sit on a saddle for the very first time. Um, we wanted to see how he reacted and how he responded. And the other photo, you can see how he likes it. Um, he now rides the horse every week and uh, has come a long way in developing some core muscle strength. Next slide. Community outreach. Our farm is not just about therapy to children and adults with special needs, but we reach out to the community. We have opened our doors at our barn um, from day one, the very first day we was out there. Um, the very first event we did was for the community. We host every year an annual barn dance. That barn dance is open to the entire community, and for the first um, Two, three years that we put that on, that was funded entirely out of our pockets as a way to give back to the, to the community. Um, we host um, the West Licking Special Olympics equestrian team, had its second year this year. Um, Coach Shannon is actually in here with us, um, who headed that up. Um, we've done um, Special Olympics riding, we host uh, veterans and first responders um, in our barn the second Friday of every month, and um, that is just a great time for veterans to come out and first responders to just have fellowship with their, their, their group of people, um, whether it, uh, they talk war stories, uh, fires, saving people's lives, or if they just want to be around brothers and just love on a horse. We always usually have some kind of food for them to eat. Um, so that is our community outreach. We do probably about 12, and I think it keeps growing, um, events throughout the year as uh, a lot of the barn families here today, core barn family, and they just, I don't know where they come up with some of their ideas, I'm going to be honest, but we always have something different going on. Um, I'm not a yoga person at all. I think it's kind of weird moving your body in those kind of weird spots, but they like to do it with alpacas, with goats. I don't know. Before long, we're going to have uh, alpaca. We're probably going to do yoga with our donkey. I don't know, but <laughs> but uh, they come up with amazing uh, events for our community that draws our community in. And the nice thing is, is that we are a very faith-based organization, but we do not have a pulpit, we don't get up and preach the gospel. We let how our lives live minister to other people. Um, next slide. Here is some of uh, what it looks like in our barn with the community outreach. Um, as we go through these slides, you're going to see, uh, I think both of these are maybe from the barn dance, um, kids just coming out and playing. Um, reading to the horses is a huge event that we have there um, at Valentine's Day. Um, let's see what else we got. Ah, safe place. It's one of the things that I love about our barn is it's not just a safe place, but it's also a place where you feel peace, you feel comfort. Um, I know for myself, walking into the barn, I can have the worst day of my life, and when I walk in there, everything just goes away, and uh, it becomes a place of peace. Um, it's kind of like a safe haven to me. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a bad day at work, a bad day, conversation with uh, our adult children. Maybe it's even a bad conversation with the wife. Nah, those never happen, right, guys? <laughs> We're all great guys. No, just kidding. Um, but the barn is what we call a safe place. It's not just a safe place to learn, but it's just a safe place to be. Um, Many of the barn uh, family, a lot of times, will just like to go to the barn when it's just them, by themselves, just the quietness and the still of the barn. I myself was even out there just all day, well, all day yesterday, I think from like 8 a.m. until I think 5 o'clock she came out to round me up because we were supposed to go Christmas shopping. I just had praise music jamming and was just out there just working away, just enjoying life. So it's a safe place to learn. Our next slide. We, we teach young children um, all the aspects of the barn. Here you can see this is our first aspect of teaching kids when they come into the barn. Um, they get the fun chore of shoveling poo. Um, it's not something people think that they would like to do. 
Um, but I even remember hearing my wife say just, I don't know, it was probably within the last month, she said, I actually find a lot of thinking time when I'm cleaning a stall. Um, you think, you get time to ponder, um, but we are teaching young children to have a work ethic. Um, as most of us in here are all adults, um, we know that this next generation of children behind us are, just to be blunt, they're lazy. Um, and to be able to have an environment that we can bring kids out and we can teach them a work ethic um, of some barn life, um, just getting them away from the computers, getting them away from their iPads, um, TVs, um, just coming out to the barn to work is what we strive to have them do. Friendships. I tell you what, Trey and Luke, when they came to the farm, they didn't, they knew of each other, but they, for about a year and a half, they rode together at the same lesson at the barn, and they became best friends, truly best friends. Um, as the picture shows with them hugging each other, um, we actually, two years ago was our first year we participated in the 4th of July parade in Granville, and we asked if any of our riders wanted to join, and those two was resounding, yes, their families wanted them there. And that's, that's the way they look the entire time. They smile, they hug, they laugh, um, and they just enjoy life. And crazy chickens at our farm that are sometimes a real nuisance to <clears throat> Molly and Jody, but uh, our kids absolutely love coming to the farm and seeing the chickens. Um, we had a volunteer was there cleaning yesterday, and she brought her autistic son with her. And I thought I heard noise, and I couldn't find where the noise was at. And then I went around back, and it was by the chickens. And Ms. April said, he has missed these chickens so much. And I'm just like, it's a dang chicken that lays us an egg. I don't see anything special about them. But the kids absolutely love them. They interact with them. Um, they love during the summertime to go pick grass and throw grass at them because chickens love to eat fresh grass. That is uh, some of our riders from our Special Olympics uh, equestrian team um, that we have done the last two years. Um, never in my wildest dreams did I think that starting this farm would open up so many doors and opportunities for people. Um, we took six riders the last two years um, to um, Springfield, Ohio, to, um, after they've competed in some local shows and a weekly training for all summer long, truthfully. Um, on a Friday night, we took them to Springfield, Ohio to compete against other athletes throughout the entire state of Ohio. And these, uh, these six individuals that we took had the time of their life and their lives were changed. But the thing that I can say that was probably changed more than those kids' lives was the volunteers that helped them. Um, to be a volunteer at the farm, you're, you're not just like one of those kids cleaning stalls. A lot of our volunteers are leading horses, developing relationships with these kids, and it truly, it truly changes your life. It gives you a different perspective. It gives you a different way to look at life. And uh, we, we are a nonprofit that runs based solely off of volunteers. Our instructors and our admin are the only paid uh, people on staff. Our volunteers, I think, get the best benefit. They do the job heartlessly. Just Thursday night, I was speaking to uh, a volunteer gentleman and I, I said to him, I said, man, you, you just don't know how much I appreciate you guys coming out here every Thursday. I said, what's it been? I said, over two years now? And Jason looked at me and goes, it's, it's been over three. And I'm like, where does time go? I said, I want you to know I really appreciate it, and I don't take it for granted. And he hugged me, and he said, buddy, if I didn't want to be here, I wouldn't be. That's the impact that this farm has on our volunteers. Next slide. This is one of the most special photos at the barn of one of our veterans. Um, 
Kyle was our very first veteran that we took to Quarter Horse Congress to compete um, in, a, in a competition that has got a lot of riders. Um, I think the first year it was 20 plus riders, I think. Um, we started the veteran and first responders programs because veterans are dear, very dear to my heart. Um, I have grandparents, great grandparents, and a brother. It's all veterans that laid down their life, willing to give their life so that I could be able to even speak here today. And for that, we're forever grateful. We don't have a large veterans program out there yet, but it will grow and it will come. Just like the barn when we started it, we had one rider for six months. And this last year we capped off at 62 riders. We were completely full with a waiting list. They say you build something good, they'll come. What we have built at Heart of a Warrior Farm is good volunteers an amazing group of people that come for the same cause, the same purpose. It's not about Jim. It's not about Lisa. It's not about the horses. Well, for some of you it might be. But for the most part, it's about doing good for other people. Next slide. This is a special individual to many of our hearts, become a good friend to a lot of us. Um, he is actually deployed right now. Um, he is the youngest member of our veterans program, and uh, he keeps in contact, I believe, with Ms. Shannon. Um, he is very eager and very excited um, for his deployment to be done and for him to be able to come back and to be part um, of the vision there at the farm. And that's a kind of a recap photo of just our volunteers having fun at the farm, our riders having fun, and again, they can be on a horse, not on a horse, and as you can see, our volunteers, uh, they get very active and excited. I don't think there's a picture that I have seen of our volunteers where they're not smiling and having a good time. And the photo on the top left with no hands on the horse, it is in a safe environment. Trust me, um, we do a lot of games and activities with these kids uh, just so that they can uh, learn balance, self-esteem, um, develop core muscle strength. And our next slide. I want to roll into this verse, which is my life verse, Romans 8.18. For I reckon the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. And I, I don't know why this has always been my life verse, probably because there's been many adversities that I've had to go through in my life. I had a marriage of 20 plus years fall apart without knowing why with six kids and thinking that why is this happening to my life? to be single for six plus years, but then to find true love of my life, Lisa. Crazy to have 10 kids together, but that is what God called us for. Um, and then blending a family with 10 kids. We both said we would never advise that to anybody. Um, but you know what? God perseveres us. He helps us to overcome. Um, there's been many challenges at the farm. Um, whether it's a financial challenge, whether it's um, volunteer help challenge on a certain night, um, healthy horses sometimes. Sometimes it's you're on the fly trying to figure out what horse to go use because the horse that you had planned in five lessons, you brought it out of the stall and it's lame. And the other horses that you could use are out in the field and they're covered in mud and it's just like it's a challenge and it's an obstacle. And... Um, one thing I have learned, and I think Kyle said it to me last Sunday, is one thing you realize that you don't realize when you buy a horse farm is you never get away and you never stop because you can't. There's always something going. I know we have farmers here today that knows that when you're not planting and when you're not harvesting, you're fixing something or you're repairing something or you're planning for something. or It's, it's a nonstop thing as a farm life. 
And uh, sufferings has become part of that. But I don't look at it as sufferings. I wanted to roll sufferings as I wrap this up um, in with the faith of a mustard seed. We can go to the next slide. This is my niece, Pearl. Pearl is six years old. She almost didn't see seven. July 31st, Pearl was maliciously attacked by six large German shepherds, tearing her from limb to limb. That's Pearl in a hospital, fighting for her life. Her right ear was completely removed off of her face. Both of her calves have zero muscle to them because they chewed them clear off. Carotid arteries were punctured, along with a whole list of other things. Faith, like a mustard seed. My brother, the Marine, loving on his daughter that's fighting for her life. But then Miss Pearl, who is so strong in her faith. Next slide. Reading the Bible in the hospital because her faith is so strong at six years old. To praising God in the hospital with worship music. To now, three months removed from an attack, smiling, still wearing a shirt that says, Jesus. I looked and looked for a video of her first day going back to church, and I couldn't find it. And my brother and I swear that it was a video out there. And we said... Maybe it's just something that between the two of us, we felt like this truly was taken. But when he wheeled her into church on her very first Sunday after three months, she said, Dad, stop. And they were in the middle of praise and worship. And he says, why? And she said, Daddy, I'm walking into church today. And she walked into church. The song service stopped. They were literally in the middle of a song service and everybody's worship stopped because of the impact that Pearl had on this community's life. As I close today, Heart of a Warrior Farm exists for the people, not just the therapeutic kids, but for all people. My barn family is truly my family. I couldn't imagine life without them. I couldn't imagine life without all the hard work at the farm, the trying days, the 17 texts from Jody on Monday morning, or the 15 questions that Shelly and Molly asked me about, what are we going to do about this? How about that? Can we change this? I, I, I couldn't change any of that, and I wouldn't change any of that. This mustard seed faith that God gave me. That he tells me that if I have that much faith, that we can overcome all things. And as Miss Pearl showed me as an example, and I'll be honest, my life ain't been the same since my niece got attacked. My life's been a wreck. It's been a challenge to focus. But I hang on to that faith. And I do know that next Friday I'm going to get off of an airplane in Orlando and I'm going to get to see her for the first time. And I'm probably going to be more of a mess then than I am now. But that's okay. Thank you all for your time, your attention. And just know that no matter what you're going through, all it takes is a little bit of faith. And I chose a song to close my part of this, it talks to me. Maybe it'll talk to you. I, listen, I heard this song last Sunday morning about 6.30 in the morning driving in the fog. And I, I didn't know who it was or what the song was, so I just 
started recording it on my phone and me and my wife dug into it and it's become a song that I've listened to this week that has just ministered to me and it talks about the faith and moving mountains and that you can overcome all things. Thank you for your time. Why would I worry when giants come calling my name? Oh, my God, it's so much bigger than troubles I face. And why would I hunger for power, riches, or fame? All of these things So I won't be shaken I won't be moved My God is faithful His promises So I My enemies scatter Cause they know the battle is Oh, yeah, my God is stronger The victory is already won Oh, yeah, I died for my ransom It rose up on the third
won't be shamed.